Welcome to my intro to After Effects for beginners. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So as I said in the beginning, today I'm finally doing an intro to After Effects, kind of like a little mini course on After Effects. If you've never touched the software or if you have used the software a little bit, you are going to be able to jump into these videos and learn something about After Effects. We're gonna be doing it in either two or three parts, depending on how far we get in part two, but this part is going to be for the basics of After Effects. But if you already know After Effects before you click away, there is going to be some stuff in here that you might learn. I know that when I watch beginner After Effects videos, I've been using After Effects for 15 years and there's still basic things I learned that I go, are you kidding me? How did I not know that? That is that is going to save a lot of time and would have saved a lot of time if I knew. So even if you do know After Effects, there is still probably some stuff in here that you can learn. But today we're going to be covering After Effects for people who like have never opened the software before. If you don't know anything about After Effects, today you're gonna learn it, you're gonna learn what goes on, what's all the windows, how to make stuff, how to make shapes, basic animations, masks, things like that. And I'm gonna show you guys at the end how to create something like this. So Sam Woodall has this at the end of his videos and I've had some people asking how to create an effect like this with the logos kind of moving across and fading out. Things like that are very simple and easy to make inside of After Effects and you're gonna be able to do that at the end of part one if you stick around. You'll learn how to create that. So without further ado, we're going to jump inside of After Effects for this part one of intro to After Effects, and we're going to take a look at everything that's going on in here. All right, guys, so here we are inside of After Effects. If you just open up the program and hit new project, this is what you're going to be greeted with, a completely blank After Effects project. The possibilities are endless. So we're gonna go ahead and cover some windows. So over here, this over here on the far left is your project window. This is where all your media is saved, all your footage, all your logos, all your assets, all your compositions, all your solid colors, everything that you have inside of your projects are saved inside of this little project window that you can just go ahead and drag down here into your layers. These are your layers down here. This is where you're gonna add all of your logos and whatnot. Up here is your actual composition viewer. This is where you're gonna see what you're doing. And then over here, there's a stack of all sorts of stuff that you can get into. I don't know which ones are opened by default, but you can open up a ton of little stacked uh, windows right here by going up to window and you'll see all the ones that you can open right here. So you've got some audio stuff, you got info stuff, you've You've got effects and presets. This is going to be a big one when you want to look through all the effects and see what you can do. You've got your character and paragraph uh, text tools. You've got motion tracking. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do over here in this stack, but you can ignore a good chunk of this for now. We'll get into this when we need to. This is the kind of stuff that makes After Effects a little bit daunting. You see all the things that are in here and are freaking out. You're like, I have no idea what's going on you don't need to know about 90% of the stuff that's over here. You just need to know a little bit to make some really cool stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do if you're opening up a new project is we're gonna create a new composition. There's a big button right here, or you can go up here to composition and hit new composition. So we're gonna click right here, and this is where you create kind of your new project where you're gonna build stuff. So I'm gonna leave it at 1920 by 1080 because that is the typical HD video resolution, 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. You can name it whatever you want. Let's call it test for now, I guess. And everything here can be left the same. I've got my frame rate set to, set to 60. If you would like a different frame rate, you can there, but all this should be good. Go ahead and hit okay. And there we go, we've got a brand new composition. As you can see, it's saved up here in our project window. We've got the test composition here. So now if we close it down here, you can see we've only got the render queue down here now. You can double click and open back up your composition. Everything you do is pretty much gonna be saved up here in the project window. And here you go, you see we've got a blank viewer now. It no longer says new composition up here. It's just all black. We can begin to add things. So if you go up here, you got your toolbar and you can see you got a bunch of different things to play with. One of the things we're gonna be playing with first is the shapes here. So if you click on this, this little rectangle and hold down, you're gonna see all of the shapes that you can create. You've got the rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, which kind of creates ovals or circles. You got the polygon, you got the star tool. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the rectangle tool and you're gonna see if you click and drag inside of your composition here, you can draw a shape. So you can draw rectangles like this. You can come up here to the fill that's gonna pop up and this is where you're gonna change the colors of your rectangle. You can hit okay. You can change the stroke color. Let's change it to like a blue. And then you can mess with this little 
little number here to make the stroke a little bit bigger. This is how you create shapes inside of After Effects. You can move this around and then you can grab these little handles and shrink it and grow it and do whatever you want. And as you can see, when we created the shape, it popped up in our layers down here. So this is where we're going to be controlling pretty much everything inside the After Effects project. So you see we got shape layer one and we can hit the drop down and you can see we begin to have all sorts of stuff that we can mess with, such as the position. You can move the position from here instead of just moving it here. If you want to be a little bit more exact, you can move the scale. You can scale it up and down just like that. You can also mess with the rotation down here. If you want to mess with the rotation without using these numbers, you can come up here and grab the rotation tool like this and move it around. This is just how you move and change all your shapes. There's tons of stuff that we can do. So from there, you can create all kinds of stuff with the shapes. You can move them around and create designs. Um, something I do want to mention that if you want to create a solid background color, you don't need to create a massive shape and make it huge like this. The way you're going to want to create a solid color is by going up here to layer, hitting new, and then hitting solid. And when you hit the solid, you're going to see that you can name it whatever you want here. We'll go ahead and leave it whatever it sets it here. And the color, we can click into there and we can make it whatever we want. So let's say we want it to be like a nice deep orange like this. Hit OK hit OK, and now you'll see it creates an entire solid color, the perfect size of the composition. This is used a ton. A lot of times I'll even use this instead of using shapes sometimes. I'll go ahead and create a solid, and then I'll move the solid around and do stuff like this instead of creating a rectangle. I don't know why I do that, but I do a lot of times. But this is a very important thing inside of After Effects, creating solid layers just like that. And as you can see, it's covering up both of our shapes because it's on top of it. You can move it to the bottom, and now you've got your shapes on top of the solid layer. So we are into the basics of After Effects. I hope you guys are following along so far. We are now going to talk about the effects panel over here. That is another big thing you need to learn at the beginning of your After Effects journey. So what we're going to do is we're going to mess around with our solid here in the back and we're going to create a bit of a cooler background by coming up here to our effects and we're going to type in ramp. Now there's all sorts of effects in here. I'm not going to be able to cover all of them. You just need to get in there and play around with adding things to see what they do. But what I'm going to show you is the gradient ramp. So if you you grab this gradient ramp and you go ahead and drop it under a deep orange solid here you're going to see that it changes it to black and white and creates this gradient look and it should open up your effects controls over here automatically in the same window that you had your project stuff in we can click over here to get back into the projects you should see when you have a layer selected it should bring up the effects controls up here for whatever that is if you do not see this go to window and you can turn on the effects controls right down here you'll see all these effects controls right here when you click on them they should pop up right here so if we click on the deep orange solid go up to effects controls you'll see this is where your effects go and where you can change the parameters of your effects so what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and click on the start ramp color and you can see we can change it back to our kind of deep orange color if we want and now it goes from orange to white you can leave it like that if you want but I'm gonna go ahead and make this go to a bit of a yellow so the end ramp color will make it go to a bit of a yellow just like that let's go ahead and hide these two shape layers here so we can see our background better the way you want to hide them is this little eye right here you go ahead and hit, hit the eye on whichever layer you want to hide and now we can see our background a little bit better so if we click on this you can see we've got the gradient ramp set and now we've got a really cool like summertime looking backdrop this is a cool way to make a nice background using gradient ramps you can see we've got it set to linear ramp right now if we set it to radial ramp it is just a little circle that we can move around and you'll see these little points that you can move around the gradient so I'm gonna go ahead and put this circle right in the center and you can go ahead and grab this one here to make the ramp kind of go smaller or bigger so you can do a radial ramp from the middle just like that or we can go back to the linear ramp and you see you've still got these little handles that you can change the position of the linear ramp as well so you can have it go up from here down to the corners. This is a really cool way to make the backgrounds for the animations you're going to be doing. And I hope this gives you an insight on how effects work inside of After Effects. When you type something in over here on these effects and you drop it onto the layer, it's going to pop up in your effects controls here. And this is where you can change things like that. So now it is time to begin talking about something a little bit more advanced, and that is masking. So if you come up here to these shape layers again, remember the rectangle and the square and the, the ellipse and things like that, these are also kind of your 
masking tools. So masking is just when you cut something out of a layer. So if we go ahead and grab our rectangle here and you see we're selected on the deep orange solid down here, if we deselect, it'll create another shape like we did before. But if we go ahead and command Z there, if we click on our deep orange solid or any layer that is not a shape layer and we draw, it's going to create a mask. So it's only going to show what's inside of what you just cut out. So you'll see we just cut out a strip of our thing right there. Let's go and command Z. We can cut out just a little rectangle just like that. We can go up here and click and grab our circle and we can go ahead and click clip out just a circle from the inside of our layer here. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do with masking. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that when you do mask, you're going to notice that it's only going to grab what's inside of the mask just like that. But what you can do is come down here to our layers here. And when you hit the drop down, you're going to see a new little drop down pops up here called masks. When you created one, hit the drop down go into masks and you're gonna have all these kind of properties you can mess with such as the feather which is going to blur the edges the opacity which is going to kind of make it darker the expansion which is just gonna grow it past the mask that you created or shrink it inside of the mask that you created and then the path is just what you drew you can move the path around after you draw it but one thing I do want to show you is this little drop down right here where it says add it is only adding what is inside of the mask but if you hit the drop down you're gonna see that there's one called subtract and if you hit subtract I'm guessing you can guess what's gonna happen it subtracts what you drew in the mask and only leaves the outside and it cuts out what was inside the mask so adding is leaving what's inside the mask subtracting is taking out what's inside of the mask there's a couple other ones down here that you can do but adding and subtracting are the main ones you're gonna want to know and that is your intro into masking just basically cutting things off of layers cutting circles out of layers out of gradient layers like that there's all sorts of things you can do with masking and like I said in the beginning when we create that animation at the end we're going to be utilizing masking as well so now it is time to move into something that scares a lot of people we're going to go ahead and turn on our layers back down here we're going to be moving into some animation animation scares a lot of people but i promise it is very easy inside of after effects so when we were going into these drop downs down here and we went to the transform tools this is where we are able to adjust the position of wherever we want the shape to be adjust the scale we we're able to adjust the rotation so this is where you're going to be doing your basic animations as well the only difference is, is you need to hit this little stopwatch over here this little stopwatch here is going to create the keyframes for you and keyframes are the just heart and soul of animation so let's take a look at how you do that so let's say we want this circle to start over here and we want it to animate and move across the screen just like that so what we want to do is for the position is what we want to animate because we want it to move like this for the position we want to hit this little stopwatch where wherever we want the animation to start so we're at the beginning as you can see you can move forward in your playhead here you can hit play and it's going to move forward in your layers right here you can see the little second timers we got two seconds four seconds six seconds eight seconds and you can zoom in and it'll become like half a second one second one and a half seconds two seconds things like that you can zoom in as you can see and what we want to do is we want to put our playhead to the beginning because that's where we want the animation to start we want to hit the little keyframe button the little stopwatch down here on our position it'll turn blue and you'll see it'll create a little keyframe on our layers down here it creates this little diamond keyframe and that means at this point we want this shape to be right here so if we move this shape right now it's going to say now at this point we want the shape to be right here so then if we move forward let's say we move forward about 30 frames just like that and we grab this and move it across the screen it's going to automatically create another little diamond here you see it creates another keyframe that says okay well now we want this shape to be here at that point so at the beginning as you can see it moves now the shape was here and now it moves to there so if we hit play you can see it just quickly moves across the screen if you want that to be slower you just expand how long it took so see we're at 30 frames here we can move this way out here past two seconds and now it's going to move a lot slower and that is pretty much the basics of animation it's just one keyframe says the shape should be here another keyframe says the shape should be here and just between those it's going to do the animation so if we do the same thing with the rotation now if we come back to the beginning and say let's put a keyframe on the rotation and see it's going to say at this point we want it to rotate right here but if we move to the end here and we go ahead and move up our rotation quite a bit just like this you're going to see now it's saying rotate it right here at the end and it's going to do that rotation in the middle so now it looks kind of like a wheel spinning as it moves through that is the basics 
of animation. I hope you guys are following along with how easy keyframes can be to do inside of After Effects. It's so easy to just add keyframes and move them. If we want it to go back now, you just move forward some more keyframes. You can move it back just like that. You can move our rotation back. And now you'll see as it gets to the end of the keyframes here, it's now going to come back again. You can mess with all sorts of keyframes with the scale, with the position, with the rotation. You can even keyframe the opacity down here, which is just how much it's visible. If you keyframe the opacity from 100 to zero, it's going to fade out. If you keyframe it from zero to 100, it's going to fade in. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with the animation inside of After Effects, and this is really just the basics. So we're gonna try to create something with what we have learned here today. We're gonna create the Sam Woodall kind of end screen thing that he has on his YouTube video because you guys have asked for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take all these shape layers here and I'm just gonna hit delete and we're gonna start brand new. Let's head back into our project window. You can see we've got our solids here that we created in a nice little folder. It did that automatically. We've got our test composition here. Everything we did is up here, but we want to add in our logo. We don't wanna add in shapes, we wanna add in our logo. So the way you can do that is you can right click and go to import and go to file or you can just grab it out of your Explorer. On my second window here, I have my logo in my Explorer and I just grab it and I can just drag it and drop it right here in this kind of a project window. So when we drop it in, it is going to import in our logo. It might take just a second. And there we go. So our logo is now imported. And as you can see, if we double click, we can take a look at what it is inside of After Effects. So let's go back into our composition. When I double clicked, it added it into the footage tab over here, but we wanna be in our composition tab here. This is what we're seeing down here. So let's go ahead and drop my logo into the composition. So now you can see we've got my Bravity M logo down here in our layers. Let's go ahead and shrink this down by grabbing these again. If I hold down shift, it'll retain the aspect ratio. If I let go of shift, you'll see I'll be able to move it like this. But holding sh down shift retains my aspect ratio for my logo. We're gonna shrink it down just like that. And we're gonna begin to build a kind of a line of logos. So the way we can duplicate a logo is by hitting Control and D. And when we do that with the layer selected, you're gonna see it creates two of them just like that. And now we can move another logo off to the side just like this. Holding down Shift makes it retain the axis that it's on so I can move it perfectly straight this way or perfectly straight this way. If I don't hold down Shift, I can move it wherever I want. So we're gonna hold down Shift to make sure they stay flat with each other and we're gonna move my logo right over here. We're gonna go ahead and hit Control D again to duplicate it again, grab another one and move it over like this. Go ahead and do that again, move it over like this. And you could do this a lot more exact and precise. If we hit this drop down here, go into our transform tools where we were doing all of it before, you can see it gives you all these numbers. So you can use these numbers to make sure you're spacing them perfectly apart from each other. But I'm just gonna do this really quickly. So we're now gonna duplicate this again, and we're gonna move it around just like that. I'm gonna duplicate this again, move it around just like that. And we're gonna do one more duplicate and move just like that. So now we've got this beautiful line of logos just like that but before we go any further I want to create the background for this animation so if you remember how we create the background we're just gonna go up to layer new and solid and we want it to be a nice dark gray background like Sam has it so a nice dark one just like that hit OK hit OK and there we go we've got our nice dark gray background but it covered up our logos so what do we need to do we need to drag it from our layers from the top down to the bottom and now our logos appear just like that perfect so one more thing we need to do before we begin moving things around and doing some animation work is we need to make our logos kind of a gray color as well. So Sam's logos aren't colored. They're also kind of a lighter gray. So another effect that I'm gonna show you guys, if we come up here into our effects presets here and type in fill, there's an effect just called fill. And if we drop it onto this kind of middle logo, you're gonna see it changes it all to one color, it changes it to red. But up here in our effects controls that should automatically open when we click on our layer, you can see there's the red little color swatch here. You can click on that and you can change this to be whatever color you want. So we're gonna change it to be a nice dark gray, just like that, just a little bit lighter than our background. But you're gonna see that that only changed one of them. So what we can do is we can take this fill and we can copy it and we can paste it to all of these by hitting control C and control V. And that's one way we can do it, but I'm going to show you something really cool that you can also do. So we're going to go ahead and delete the fill on all of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all of these logos 
into one layer. So you'll see that all these logos are in their own little layer down here. What we're going to do is we're going to hold down shift so that we can click one here and click one here and select all of them. We're going to right click and we're going to hit pre-compose. Pre-compose just means compressing them all into one layer. So if we hit pre-compose, we can call this logos just like that. Hit OK. And now you're going to see that the logos layer is all in one freaking layer. This is really cool and really a really good way to stay organized when you're doing massive projects like this, when you have a lot of logos and a lot of layers. It's a really cool way to stay organized, but it's also a cool way to go ahead and apply effects to everything in that layer. So now if we drop the fill effect onto the logos layer, you see it applies to everything in the pre-comp. And now we can go up here to this red, we can change it to our light gray, just like that. Hit OK, and now we've got all of our gray logos created just like that. We didn't need to copy and paste it to every single logo. So now what we want to do is we want to duplicate the logos layer by hitting Control D again, hold down Shift, and we want to move it up just like this again. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate it again, and we want to move this one down to the bottom just like that. So now we've got this wall of logos, which is a really cool look, by the way. And for the center one, we kind of want to move it to the side like Sam has it. We want to kind of alternate it just like that. If this one's cut off over here, that doesn't matter, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So now we've got our logos in the shape that we want it. Let's go ahead and pre-compose them again. So as we created those layers of logos, we created three layers down here. Let's go ahead and select all those, go to pre-compose, and call this, uh, let's call it logo spread, because now it's all of them spread out. Hit OK, and there we go, we've got our logo spread. So for these pre-comps now, if we did want to go back and change that fill effect, if we wanted to change the color, you can actually double click into the logo spread and we can get the logos that we had before and vice versa, you can click back into the logos here and you can get into the original logos as well. And you'll see it pops up in all these compositions here. All the compositions we create and have open are going to pop up in these tabs right here so we can jump through and change whatever we want so we've got our individual logos here we've got our logo spread where we can change the fill effect here and we can go back into our main composition where it's all combined right here so let's go ahead and animate these logos now if you remember how we animate those we need to go down into our drop down into our transform and we want to animate the position like we did before we want them to move across the screen nice and slow so we're gonna move our playhead to the beginning just like that select our logos we're gonna go ahead and hit the little stopwatch next to position and move them this way just like that let's go ahead and move them to about right there i'll show you why here in a second and let's go ahead and move forward um Let's move forward like eight seconds, all the way here to this eight seconds mark, and then let's move our position kind of like that. That is far enough. Let's see if that's too slow. No, I don't think that's too slow. That's perfect. So as you can see, we've now got these beautiful logos moving across the screen just like that. At the beginning here, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm actually gonna move our logos to be a little bit further this way, just kind of like that. Beautiful. And then when we move forward this way, let's see if they go farther. Okay, perfect. So we've got our logos animating across the screen, nice and slow, nice and beautiful. Now the one thing we need to do to finish this up is we need to have them fading out on the edges. And the way we're gonna do that is utilizing the masking I talked about. So we actually want to duplicate this gray solid here. So he'll go ahead and hit Control D to duplicate the gray solid. And we wanna move this gray solid on top of our logo spread. So now we've got this sandwich of gray solid, our logo spread, and gray solid. And for this top one, we're gonna make sure it's selected and go up here to our masking tools like before, grab our rectangle mask, and we want to just draw a rectangle onto the edges just like this. So it cuts in just like that. We only leave a little bit over here on the edges. But as you can see, we've cut out the inside instead of the outside. So if you remember what we need to do, we need to go into our mask tools here and where it says add, we need to change that to subtract. So now it cuts off the edges and leaves everything in the middle, but now we need it to kind of fade out a little bit more clean. So like we did before, we're gonna go down into our mask properties and the mask feather that blurs out the edges. We're just gonna up our mask feather. And now as you can see, our logos fade out instead of just cut out. So that is our animation right there. And just like that, if you can believe it, we are actually done with this Sam Weddle animation for the end screen. So if we go ahead and hit play, you're gonna see we've got the logos just kind of animating through beautifully, nice and slow. And 
and because of the nice masked gray solid on either side we've got them fading in and then fading off this is a really cool animation that you could have on the end screen of your youtube videos as a starting soon screen as an ending screen on twitch doesn't even need to be youtube i just popped my finger when i pushed on them and that is pretty much it for making an awesome animation inside of after effects you could have known nothing when you clicked on this video about after effects and you could be leaving with this animation right now and i hope it was simple for you guys to follow this has been part one of my intro to after effects you guys can run with this animation and begin to play around by adding more effects masking things changing things adding the gradient ramps to things all sorts of stuff to do inside of after effects and one of the best ways to learn it is just by playing around but come back next week for part two and i don't know if we're going to be doing more parts past that we might finish everything in part two but in part two we're going to be doing a bit more advanced animation advanced masking and maybe creating something like a full starting soon screen or like a full web webcam border with animations things like that and then we're also going to be covering how you export out of after effects when you're done creating an animation and you want to get it out into your twitch stream how do you export it and get a file instead of an after effects project but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know a lot of people have been asking me to do an after effects course like this so this is kind of the intro to that if you want me to do more of these if you want me to do one for premiere pro or photoshop things like that where you just want to learn about software from the beginning all the way to doing something maybe a bit more advanced let me know down in the comments i hope you guys enjoyed this video come back for part two next week and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye.